All righty. Well, Kufar, Akbar, everybody, welcome to another edition of the Crossing the Crescent Discussion Group. This is a weekly live stream show dedicated to rightly dividing the truth between Christianity and Islam. I am your host, your humble host, Thakafer, Eric Thakafer, coming to you live from the cavernous depths of the Cap Cave in Dar or Hakkapiristan. We're here every Monday at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and a few hours out on the West Coast. Sharon, what time are we here? Four o'clock, I think. All uh, right. It's three o'clock. Three o'clock. Okay. So three o'clock. So there's a wide range there. And if you are in bloody England, uh, it would be 11 o'clock. Um, if you are interested in coming to the stream, I was going to say if you're interested in coming to the stream, Rad, can you do me a favor? I hate to ask this. Rad, are you there? Rad's kind of in and out. He's kind of Is there any way that you can post this, the link to the stream? Uh, Pin it in chat for me. If uh, not, when I get home, when I get home. Okay, you're not home. All right, never mind. I'll, I'll get you. All right, so if you just want to come to the stream, let me know, and I'll I'll send you the. I, I, can I do that from? It doesn't matter. All right. Uh, all right. I can do it. Who can do it? Paul, you're gonna. Do it. Yeah. All right. Thanks, I think Paul. I, I appreciate do it. it. Okay. Uh, all right, so what was I going to say? I was going to do a couple admin things before we get into the today's topic. Today's topic, we're going to be talking about Mecca. Once again, Mecca once again. And the reason why we're going to go to Mecca once again, and I was listening to Jay Smith. You guys don't go to Flander, what is it, Flander, Flan, it's not Flander, is it Flander Films website? Or? Yeah, Flander yeah. Films. Yeah. yeah, okay. If you you guys need to, if you haven't gone over, you need to get you scoot your little behind over there, not not why my show's on, of course, and pull up some of his videos and watch his videos. This guy is just, he's just a wealth of information, wealth of knowledge. Um, go to his YouTube channel if you have to, but uh, yeah, thank you, Danny, for doing that. And Paul, okay, everybody's doing that. If you guys can't get on the stream now, then you are just broke. Um, I can't spin it, but I can, um, I put it there. <laughs> okay, well, thank you. Uh, all right, so, uh, oh, and also, let me add this. The, oh, was, let me get back to Jay. The reason why we're doing the, the Mecca thing is, is because the more times we do this, the more times we look at Mecca, the more times you hear something, the more apt you are to be able to repeat it without having to look the stuff up. So, you know, the more times I do this, I can, you know, I, I, I'm i getting it now, or I can just, you know, cite this stuff off the top of my head. And that's where you need to be. If you're going to engage, you know, whether it's on uh, like you know, Connie, she, you know, she's on Clubhouse all the time. I don't even know if she hangs anywhere else other than Clubhouse anymore. Um, or if you're over in uh, the Twitter, Twitter, whatever, wherever you're at, uh, engaging, uh, it's always good to have this information. That's why we're going to be doing it again uh, today. Um, I want to give a hat tip to Connie. Is she still here? Where is she? There she is. Okay, yeah, Connie. Uh, we uh, worked on um, a couple new things on the uh, intro. So if you notice that we are and still indeed high atop the rankings of the most Islamophobic intro on YouTube. And we only compounded that Islamophobia uh, by adding a few more clips to it, or Connie added a few more clips to it uh, this week. I thought the old one were just, we're sitting there watching nothing but rocket attacks. I'm thinking, man, what are all these rockets? I mean, of course, the Hamas holes are fired in excess of 10,000 rockets. I don't know. Maybe it's over 20,000 rockets now at Israel. Oh, did you see what they did to the the, the Hezbollah the other night? Oh, yes. yes. Oh, yeah. Hey, baby. You're going to – and this is, this, is, this is 1967 stuff. If you remember, the Egyptians, Al Nasser put his entire army on that southern Israel border right there on the Sinai. And wouldn't attack. And Israel had to shut down their entire country until they did. And they said, okay, fine. You're not going to attack? Guess what, baby? And he took out their Air Force in two hours. This is the same thing. They found, How would you like to be what, – what's the guy's name that runs Hezbollah? Um, what's his name? I wouldn't, want my, I wouldn't want to have that name right now because you know what? Um, <laughs> he's probably in what's a bunker. Ten you know what's down a yeah, he's in, he's he's holed up. Yeah, he's he's holed up in a bunker. But now this guy's got to worry. He's got a mole. I mean, somebody's diming him out, saying, "Hey, look, we're gonna attack at five o'clock 
And this, these are the rock launchers that we're going to hit. Everything's going to be all out there. All you have to do is just splashes with your Air Force. What do they do? Send up 100 jets, and next thing you know, half the country's on fire. Uh, that Not Naj, Naj, not, not Hassan Nasrallah. Nasrallah. There we go. I knew it was an N something. Ninkum poop. Anyway, Nasrallah is from calling. He made an announcement from his bunker. No kidding. I'd be in a bunker too, and that thing going to save him. But anyway, these guys went in there and let them have it. But that's all we were seeing on the on the on the intro. That's why we kind of changed things up. And now, uh, anyway, it, it, I, I love that, and I I really appreciate the work that Connie uh, puts in on that. That's just so fantastic. Um, next Monday show, another uh, admin note here. We're going to have the patriotic Christian on. Uh, he was supposed to come on last week, but there was somebody that sits on our panel that had him on his show for two hours and wore him out. The guy took a nap and he didn't, he fell asleep and he couldn't, that's not true. I'm <laughs> kidding, you, but you know, I'm kidding. Yeah. Um, but evidently he sent me this, like this five minute recording this week saying, man, I'm dude, I'm sorry. Uh, he, he, number one, he got hacked. Uh, then he got arrested. Then they took his phone and you know, it's so we're going to have him back on next Monday um so the patriot christian from england will come in and he's going to explain to us what's going on over there and what's happened to him and his channel um wednesday this wednesday dr kufar phobia is going to be doing a uh, live stream um he's going to let me come on and we're going to talk about uh islamic history a little more islamic history that's going on with that um for those of you who did not see it but we'll want to go see it soon just as soon as this show's over jump go over to uh lloyd de jong's channel is this also on your channel paul or no your live stream uh, no i didn't put it on i couldn't put it on my channel but no definitely we were we had a good time <laughs> okay so go over to lloyd's channel and uh paul was on his channel today talking about how, what's that Sharia. word well it was Sharia. Nader, not what's the word not no, the Nader. Nader. yeah okay so get over there and uh, and, and watch that uh, and uh, see why you can't make a vow using Allah's name according to the I'm, Sharia. I'm, yeah, according to the Sharia, you're not supposed to, to lie while making a vow and using his name. Okay. So you'll find <laughs> it there. Okay. Yeah. And then lastly, if you haven't been watching this channel, which... I tell you what, somebody has, because that video that we did on, this is kind of the segue into today's show. We did a video about three weeks ago on Ptolemy finding Mecca, sort of. That's the name of the video. And for me, you know, I know you go to like uh, God Logic's channel or you go to Chris Claus's channel or you go to Lloyd's channel, whatever. You know, they get a thousand viewers or 2000 views, 10,000 views, 50,000, Sam's, you know, whatever. We got 2,000 views on that. And for this channel, that is, that's quite a bit. That That's that's a lot for us. So whatever uh, is driving that train, I'm not exactly sure what it is, but uh, it's it's going up every week or every day. I, I go in and I check and it's already, it's increasing. So something's going on with that. And I think it is this topic, this topic of the historicity, sorry, Paul, the historicity <laughs> of of Islam or the lack thereof. The one the one way that we did about Ptolemy and Mecca, what I basically did there is I just tackled this idea that nobody mentions Mecca in any literature. And I and I start naming off sources. I start naming off all the ancient explorers, all the ancient cartographers, people who drew the maps, people who led armies through that region, and every single one of them that goes to describe that region says it's uninhabitable. And I show why Makaroba is not Mecca. Uh, I provide the citations of the people who speak the language and talk about the etymology of, of the word Makaraba and also Mecca and how they, they do not mix. And so this, this show, that show was meant to be a, um, a what's the word? I'm not, not a substitute for but a precursor for what we're going to do today. The, today, what we're going to do is we're going to look at Mecca itself in the seventh century. We're gonna look at what other people had to say about Mecca in the seventh century, or more importantly, 
what they didn't have to say and why they didn't say anything about Mecca in the seventh century. Because when you think, just think, folks, the implications here. Three big things about Islam. The Quran, you can't have Islam without the Quran. Muhammad, you can't have Islam without Muhammad. And Mecca, you cannot have Islam without Mecca. You take just one of those three away and the whole house of cards comes tumbling down. The problem is, and this is the problem, that you need people with intellectual honesty when uh, they need to engage honestly, intellectually, when uh, you, you talk about these matters. And it's, it's, kind of, it's hard to get people to do that. So let's go ahead and get started on this thing. Does anybody have anything to say before we get rolling on this? I have a question. Did you see? Yes. Who's talking? Who is this? Me. It's Isa. <laughs> Who? Isa. Yeah. I know it's been a while since I heard you. You were gone last week. I don't know where you were last week. I don't know. I, been, I, I forgot this time slot. I'm so used to Sunday. So. Oh, oh okay. Hold your question just a second. Let me just say one thing. Beginning next month, not next month, October, we're going to start the show at 5.30 instead of 5. I have a scheduling thing. I got to do a good news club at the elementary school for... So just be prepared to be pushed back an extra half hour. All right, Issa, go ahead. Sorry, I'm sorry. No, no, you're totally good. Um, did you see the God Logic debate with John Fontaine on Modern Day Debates? No. It was an interesting debate. It was about the... Um, does the Quran affirm the Torah in the Injil. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's interesting because God Logic is a very good debater on that. I don't know if you've seen that, but um, uh, if you see, if he did actually another um, video too where he went to Hamza and they were debating there and some guy named Rumsey or something. It was interesting. It was interesting stuff. So I think that's yeah. an interesting. Well, God topic. Logic is, the, is, is a beast when it comes to debating to begin with. And like I said, he's only, what, 30 years old, 29, 30. And that, that's not. Yes, we can hear you, Rad. Um, not that that's, you know, I hold that against him at all in any way, shape, or form. It's just that for somebody that young to be that good and have that knowledge base is just mm -hmm. absolutely. And his temperament, too, because he has this. This sense of humor that accompanies all that, and the way that uh, uh, he presents. So he's, yeah, he is definitely a beast, and uh, he's a great blessing for us to have uh, have around. I'll get over it when I get some time. I'll uh, jump into that. Why do we have two of the lies of Islam here? Are they twice as important? Or maybe <laughs> or... it's a double county. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, all right. So wait, let's wait, go wait, ahead. Wait. Wait, wait, I just, I just was checking the comments on the Ptolemy video. You got a comment here from one day ago. Folks, the truth is not with this man. He clears, clearly knows nothing about Christ, nor his role in Islam. He is deceiving and lying about things, which he knows not. What is that on? Is that on the Ptolemy one? Yeah, it's by Ezra oh. 7540. I just thought that was funny. Yeah, I try to keep up with that. Yeah, it's just... Um... Yeah, it's 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 hard to keep up with a lot of that stuff. But anyway, okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at seventh uh, century Mecca. Where are we? We're right here, and how this um, is a big deal. Now, I went in and I tried to pull one of those John tricks from Kufar, Doctor Kufar Phobia, and take on Chat GGP, that AI application, to see what it has to say about Mecca. Now, one of the things that if you if you know anything about these AI applications, they are definitely left leaning because I was asking it some questions about uh, Kamala Harris and Tim Waltz. I don't know if it was yesterday, the day before yesterday, I was, yesterday because I was doing this yesterday. There are a bunch of leftists. It's a bunch of leftist pigs. That AI AI stuff. I asked them, okay, what is what is Tim Waltz? When was Tim Waltz in combat? And it says, well, Tim Waltz was deployed to Afghanistan. And, da, da, da. and I'm like, what in the heck is wrong with you? You know, how can, how can, how can you say that? That's not, you, you know that's not true. And so when you start using it, you have to take everything with a grain of salt. And so watch this. Watch this nonsense. The question is, what evidence is there that Mecca existed in the 7th century? And here is ChatGGP's answer. It says, the existence of Mecca 
is supported by several lines of evidence, don't you see? You have historical evidence. You have the trade routes, which are well documented. You have archaeological evidence from excavations in and around Mecca. And they have undercovered what? Artifacts and structures that date back to the 7th century? Really? Um, then you have the pilgrimage tradition that goes along with that. So it is, the evidence is robust. So I thought, okay, so up here it says archaeological evidence. Archaeological excavation conducting and around uh, uncovered artifacts and structures that date back to the 7th century um, and earlier. And then look what it says here. These findings include inscriptions, pottery, coins, remains of ancient buildings. And it says the archaeological discoveries support the existence of a settlement in the area during that time. Really? Okay. Well, then I ask, list the archaeological excavations conducted in Mecca that date back to the 7th century. To the best of my knowledge, there haven't been any extensive archaeological excavations conducted within the city of Mecca that date back to the 7th century. So it just it, it contradicts itself, right? I, I know why it does that. Why? Because people get hired to write. This is it. A, it's not these these papers are. They actually pay people to write this stuff, and then they're claiming AI is generating it. That's that's the problem. So they're they're hiring people. I mean, I get I get advertisements every day asking me to to write for AI, and I refuse to do that. So really, yes, every single day I get like three or four advertisements to write for ai and that's exactly what it is these are i would like, think that they were pulling it from they're, they're they're pulling it from different sources from across the internet itself that's not no, true it's not true they're actually having people do the writing and that's how you get this and you know when i when i discovered that i'm I've, you know, like wait a minute this means the ai is just a joke so it pulls pieces from what they ask people to write these things and they pull from those pieces so if you have a, a Muslim preferred, you know, if they want a Muslim Islamic answer, they're going to pull it from an Islamic written point of view. So it has to do with the slant of the AI and then the papers that they're sourcing. Hmm. I was th I was thinking that they had figured out a way where it can go out and tap into like a Google search engine, you know, go out and tap into different that's what you would think but it's that's not what's happening that's that's what i and i only know that because i get asked every day about three or four times you know being shown advertisements uh <laughs> i i don't write for others like that because i wrote for wiki and they started changing everything um i wrote I for wikipedia wrote. wikipedia i've posted on yeah i yeah um the I, as a matter of fact, I went in and I wrote a piece for um, they have they have a page for the Democratic Party. And I put down after our withdrawal from Iraq, I put down that the, the national flag for the Democratic flag or flag or party today is a, is a white sheet of surrender. And they took it down. I could not figure out why they would take that off of Wikipedia and they won't let me post on well, Wikipedia. I wrote all this yeah. documented stuff on the International Institute of Islamic Thought, and somehow it got disappeared. Shock. Shock. Yeah. Um, brave New World. Big Brother. Here we come. Okay, let's jump back over to this. Uh, the references that I'm using today, of course, come from Dr. J. Smith's uh, Islam Origins class that I took. Or I, I didn't really take it. I just... What do they call that where you audit it? You just go in and you audit. listen. That's all, that's all I Monitor, did. Monitor, audit. audit, yeah. Yeah. And then uh, Dan Gibson's, his work, um, his four books, uh, Nabatea, or from Nabatea.net, but uh, Early Islamic Kiblas, Chronic Geography, and Let the Stone, three books, I'm sorry, Let the Stone Speak. And then uh, Islam in Light of History by Dr. Amari. And then this book right here, Peter Townsend's book, The Mecca Mystery. If you don't have this book, you guys need to get it. This is a fabulous book. Uh, there's a ton of information in it. And uh, he does a great job of presenting it. Okay, so when we look at civilizations themselves, and this is why when we look, we want to look at is Islam from the same perspective 
of every other religion, civilization, empire, uh, and it, it, it's a fair thing to do that. So if we were going to do, let's say, um, we were going to look at the history of Italy. Now, Italy, of course, is, was the home of the Roman Empire. You have Rome there, of course. So if we were to look at the history of Italy and we were going to uh, find information on the city of Naples, uh, with, you know, Bellinopoli, if we were going to find uh, information on uh, Milan and the Duomo there, or Frienza, Florence, go to Florence, you know, the home of the Renaissance, or go to Venezia, Venice, where you have the canals, uh, or Pisa with the Leaning Tower, Genoa, where Columbus is from. All of these, all of these cities would be you, you find, but then you 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 look at Rome. Nobody mentions Rome in all the histories that you find at that time. That would be a problem. You would have a huge problem with that history. This is the case of Mecca. If you were going to cite all of these great locations and places uh, 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 and events, but you don't have Mecca, you'd have nobody mention Mecca contemporaneously with all these other events, you have a huge problem. And when we think of all those other locations, Mecca is the mother of all cities. Because um, if we look, and here's, you know, this, this is what we find in Rome today. This is, this is the, the, the Colosseum. We, we find actual artifacts there. And it's not just in Rome. It's all over uh, the entire uh, city of Italy and also the surrounding uh, countries. So the Roman Empire expanded. Uh, what, I'm not going to get into all that. But, I mean, you have all kinds of uh, writings that demonstrate that the Roman Empire exists. Same thing with the Egyptian Empire. I mean, look at the, you know, we got the... Of course, you got the pyramids and the Sphinx, but you got places like Avaris, where uh, you, you have uh, settlements that thought that they were Hebrew settlements at one time. And then you have, of course, uh, hieroglyphics. You have the ancient writings describing uh, uh, the Egyptian history and events there and great rulers. In the Greek Empire, of course, you have all kinds of information, uh, you know, De demonstrating the historicity of the Greek Empire. The same thing with the Chinese. The Chinese got a ton of stuff. But when we get to Islam, Islam is a different animal. Now, here's what we have for Islam. Let me see if I can do this. Does this is this better? No, that's not better. That's not the right one. Um, is it this one? Um, never mind. I'm just going to go. I'm just going to go back to this one. Okay. So when we look at the Islamic world. It begins right here um, with, it's supposed to begin right here in Mecca and Medina. They call this region the Hajjaz. And then you have the Rushadun period, which is the four rightly guided caliphs, Abu Bakr, Uthman, um, Omar, or Abu Bakr, Omar, Uthman, and then Ali. Now, let me say this. Make sure everybody understands this. Make sure you understand this point, folks. Look out. Let me go back to this. Look how far within 30 years this Muslim empire, had supposed Muslim empire, had expanded. This is 30 years after the death of Muhammad. 29 years. Out of all these regions here that uh, Islam expanded into, this is, the, this is a big point, folks. You need to know this for your apologetic or your polemic. Not one writing, not one writing has been discovered that mentions any of the four rightly guided caliphs or Muhammad in any of those regions that have been conquered. Nobody mentions them. So if you were sitting in Jerusalem, let's say you're sitting in Jerusalem in 638, and you have these hordes riding into your city, demanding that you surrender, forcing the Pact of Umar on you. And nobody around you bothers to write down that this guy from uh, the southern part of the Arabian Peninsula brings all of his armies up here, soldiers up here, and conquers us and doesn't mention him. Nobody mentions any of the four rightly guided caliphs outside of Islamic literature. Nobody. That is a problem. We have nothing that says that this ever happened or it was a, it was a Muslim uh, uh, army. Nothing. There's nothing there. Let's go back. That that is critical. But but wait wait wait. So the Kafir. 
don't you understand that's one of the miracles is that Allah has protected the knowledge and has hidden it from you kafirs. So only those that truly believe will believe. That's the miracle. No. Yeah, the miracle with no evidence. <laughs> well, it's a miracle that anybody believes it. That's, what, that's, that's the miracle right there. It's a miracle that anybody that understands how history is done would believe believe that this believe this nonsense because if you if you have a true understanding of history and how history how historical facts are arrived at you would run away from islam you would you would do it today you would get out of it today and then when you look at the first major dynasty with Malawiya all the way through uh, uh all the other caliphs in the uh umayyad dynasty it goes all the way up into um, southern or into France it goes out outside of Paris for crying out loud the tours with Charles Martel and goes all the way into the Hindu Kush um, in the West now why is this important why is Me Mecca so important well let, let me back up here number one why is it important Islam cannot compare it to these other other civilizations number whoops let me I don't even have this up on the screen come on Capper. Number one, there's no evidence outside of Islamic sources for the existence of Mecca in the seventh century. There is no, let me say that one more time. Make sure you understand it. Write it down. Oh, by the way, if you want a copy of this slideshow, email me and I'll send it to you. No charge, no conditions. I'll send it to you. No problem. It's just if you use it, I would just ask that you give a little attribution. Um, let's see here. Second thing is there's no archaeological evidence supporting the existence of Mecca. When I say about evidence, there's no manuscript evidence for the existence of Mecca. Nobody mentions Mecca outside of the seventh century. Nobody. There's no corroborating evidence for the existence of Mecca in the seventh century from the Quran itself. When the Quran goes to describe the Hejaz or describe Mecca, it gets it incorrect. And I'll show you how here in just a little bit. And there's no map evidence, cartological evidence for the existence of Mecca. The first time Mecca is mentioned on a map is 900 AD. Muhammad died in 632. Folks, that's what? 68, 268 years after the death of Muhammad before, before it's even found on a map anywhere. So, number, so the biggest thing to come away from this is that there's no foundational history, no foundation, no history for Mecca. And when we think of Mecca itself, in the Quran, it's described as being where Adam and Eve were cast down to from heaven. This is where Abraham and Ishmael supposedly built the Kaaba. So here, even if you think that Adam and Eve are, are uh, allegorized or uh, some type of myth, that's fine. Go ahead and believe that. But if you're going to get down to history, no believe, nobody believes that Abraham and Ishmael were myths. Abraham and uh, Ishmael are historical characters according to the Bible and according to the Quran. So that means that the Kaaba, Mecca, had to exist for has had to exist for four thousand years. Four thousand years. It's called the mother of all cities in the Quran. You have uh, other pagan religions that uh, evidently existed. In Mecca at this time, um, you have uh, Muhammad beginning his prophethood here. You have hundreds of people being buried there, hundreds of prophets that are supposed to be buried there. Uh, it's where 1.8 billion people bow five times a day. And this is where, you know, Muslims are required to visit, make a pilgrimage to at least once in their lifetime. This Mecca is essential, is an essential pillar to um to Islam. And if it doesn't exist, the foundation of Islam crumbles right before you. Now, when you compare that to biblical history, you know, nobody taught, you know, nobody doubts Jerusalem existing uh, in the 11th century BC when uh, David uh, was alive or Saul. Nobody, nobody doubts that. It has, we have archaeological evidence demonstrating it. No one doubts the, 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 the land features in and around Israel as described by the prophets. Uh, nobody doubts uh, other locations as described in the Bible. You take uh, Sennacherib, who is clear over in Iraq, in Mosul, what is outside of Nineveh today. 
Same thing with Sargon II, Babylon, Egypt. Nobody doubts that these locations ever existed. It, they're very they're described very specifically in the Bible. And when you look at the Gospel of Luke, the Gospel of Luke is very descriptive um, as far and, and, and identifies, I think it's like 109 or 100 different references to locations in the Gospel of Luke, where in the Quran you only have 65. Now, let me give you an example of why this is so devastating to Islam. Let's take this city right here, Najran. Now, Najran is supposed to be on this trade route that <clears throat> extends up the western coast of Arabia, up into uh, Israel and Gaza, and this, this area up here. Now, Najran is 400 miles from Mecca, and it sits on literally layers of archaeological digs, of archaeological evidence. Layer after layer after layer of, of uh, evidence has been found in Najwan. How can that be? How can you keep finding all these layers and layers of archaeological evidence in Najwan and nothing in Mecca? It's listed by uh, ancient writers, Strabo. Strabo was a writer for... Uh, a Roman general, uh, Gallus, I believe his name was. They come marching down through here, and he he mentions uh, Najran. Um, it's listed on other trade route documents and is described. Um, you have a local bishop is supposedly have been martyred there, and it's nothing more than just a it's you know it's it's a hamlet. It's it's insignificant compared to the importance of Mecca, but yet it has exponentially more evidence for it than Mecca does. And Mecca is supposed to be the mother of all cities, folks. This is problematic. When you have something as minor and insignificant, I'm not saying any city or any location is insignificant, but this one in particular, if you were just to do the compare and contrast, where all the emphasis is placed on Mecca, and Mecca is supposed to have this ancient, ancient history dating back to Adam and Eve. And let's just forget that. Let's go back to, to Abraham. That's 4,000. That's 1,600, or I'm sorry, 2,600 years before Muhammad. And yet we have no evidence for it. So let's look at how historical facts are determined. Number one, you can, uh, you can gain historical evidence by looking at documents. And Fortunately, in that region of the world, documents are very, very well preserved. Why? Because it's, it's a very dry climate. And humidity and moisture is what destroys documents. Then you have to look at the reliability of the authors. Was Bukhari... Now, here, here, this, is, this is something I heard from Jay Smith today, folks. Jay Smith was talking about the, the oldest extant copies that we have of Sahih Bukhari, which was compiled 870. Okay, look at the timeline. 870 is when Bukhari compiled his his uh, his um, hadith, sorry. And that is what? That's uh, 240 years, 248 years after the death of Muhammad. 230, it doesn't matter. It's over it's two, two and a half centuries after the death of Muhammad. The earliest extant copy we have of that is the 16th century, 1500s. The earliest copy we have of Bukhari is in the 1500s. And they want to sit there and complain about you. You don't have any originals of the of the, of the gospel. Shut your pie hole. I mean, come on. <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous, the duplicity and the hypocrisy that we get here. Uh, the reliability of the authors, the distance, the time, and the place. Again, like I said, if you're going to describe Mecca, you're going to describe the Hajjaj region, which in if you, if you look at the Hadith, it's completely off. It's all janked up. Um, it's not accurate. Um, the written distribution. And so when we look at uh, documents, manuscript evidence trumps oral traditions any day of the week, every day of the week. Yeah, there we go. Way to go, Victoria. I appreciate that. Yes, ma'am. There we go. Um, let's see. Uh, archaeological evidence will support um, if you're going to have evidence for your religion, like old mosques. But the problem with the old mosques, you go to Dan Gibson's, uh, what is this book called? Early Islamic, Early Islamic Qiblas. 
he destroys this. I mean, you don't have the first Kibla doesn't face Mecca for a hundred years. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it's insane. And we're not just talking about, you know, a few degrees this way, a few degrees that way. Okay, fine. You missed. We're talking 45 degrees. You just get in the opposite direction for Pete's sake. In some cases, it's ridiculous. Um, and then maps, of course, Mecca doesn't appear on the maps and then artifacts can support uh, historical facts like that. And the last one we use, of course, is oral traditions. Mecca. We don't have any primary documents or written sources for it. There's no artifacts prior to the 12th century. Folks, right here, no artifacts have been discovered in Mecca prior to the 12th century. Wow. No artifacts. I'm going to say this again. No artifacts have been discovered in Mecca pri that date prior to the 12th century. That is devastating. If the city is supposed to have a 4,000 year history, a minimum of a 4,000 year history, and you don't have anything, you know the easiest, I, I've thought about this. I've, thought, I've given a lot of thought about this. The easiest way to shut people like me up on this, you could do it in the drop of a hat. The only thing you have to do is take your happy little butt over to that Zamzam well. Now, the Zamzam well is not just a hole in the ground that you lower a bucket into and you draw up water. A well is dug where people would walk down a series of steps down into it. All you have to do is go down those steps, dig in and around those steps, and pick up pottery and date the pottery. And if you can date that pottery prior to the 7th century, it is game over. This guy loses, but they can't. And the reason why they can't is because it does not, nothing exists. That Zamzam, well, we're gonna talk about that here shortly too, is nothing but a, a farce too. Okay, uh, let's see here. There's no archeological evidence. It's all, and the evidence that they have that would have existed has all been destroyed. Give me just a second. I need to do something here real quick. Hold on, hold on. Coming right back. Hold on. The queen just pulled up and I didn't want to have to listen to me rant and rave. I got to okay. say it. Eric's on fire today. Just got to put that out there. What's on fire, yes. Oh, there we go. Oh, look at Aladdin. Hey, he's here. Good morning. Uh, okay. No, no, there's no evidence. Um, in the in empires to the north, east, west, or south of Mecca, there's nothing there. And we're going to talk about those here in, in a couple seconds. So all the evidence, all the evidence for Mecca comes from secondary tertiary oral sources two centuries removed, two centuries after the fact. And they all are Islamic oriented sources. Yes, but where is your proof? Where is your proof for Jesus? Where is your proof of Jesus? Show me your proof. You have yeah. nothing. Nothing. And that's the only thing they that's their only retort. Yeah. Defend your Quran. Defend your defend your Mecca. Come on now. Defend your Mecca. Now the Islamic evidence for Mecca um, that that we that they do have for it comes from the Quran itself. Now the Quran, I put the fifth century to eighth century. The Quran <laughs> the, we have a Quran, we have a copy of the Quran. Um what is this? What is it? Finally unblock me. What are you talking? Dude, just folks, if Aladdin wants to to post in chat, just let him post. I don't care. I, I really don't care. Unless he starts insulting Jesus Christ, just 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 let him have at it. Who cares? You know, who cares? You know, it, he's he's just he's quality entertainment. But right here, folks, right here, fifth century, fifth century, that's the four hundreds. The Sana manuscript is dated. To the 400, we have carbon 14 dates that date the Sana manuscript to two centuries before it was supposed to be. <laughs> it's supposed to be written down. Uh, so that's why I say fifth century. Um, it comes from the Sira, which is the biography of Muhammad, and that in of itself is call, being, being called into question even today. Um, we have no evidence that this guy, this um, Ibn Hisham ever existed. It's supposed to be an N, not ID or D. It's supposed to be an N. Uh, 
or the same for uh, what's the other guy, uh, Ibn Ishak. Uh, let's see here. Um, the Hadith, the literature, and this again is developed uh, during the Abbasid Empire. This uh, uh, we don't get Bukhari until 870, which is you know two centuries after Muhammad. Uh, we don't get Muslim until 875. So as you can see, even the six major, I mean, Al Nasi, uh, 915 for crime. I mean, look at these dates, folks, for the uh, for the Hadith literature. I mean, they're all but two and a half centuries Kaffer, too late. Kaffer, Kaffer, Kaffer. They have we have the science of the Hadith. We have unbroken chains of narrations. We know exactly who, when, what, how these people were. We know their honesty and integrity. For instance, the man that brought you the house Quran was a liar and a thief. He stole books and did not return them. He published works in his, stole other people's works and published them in his own name. And he's a liar and a thief. And you cannot accept any of his hadiths. But you must accept his Quran. Okay, you said you the science the of the hadith. Where do we get the science of the hadith from? Where does that come from? Quranic science scientists. They all can no. all agree. They call the science of the hadith. The science of hadith comes from the hadith. Stop. It's circular. It's stupid. Uh but it's this right here. Works. Queen Zapeda went on pilgrims to Mecca and was distressed. There was yeah, okay, yeah, I have this in here. Um she built a aqueduct. Yes, I have that in there when we talk about the water. Um, yes, very good. Okay, so the Quran and the traditions. When we look at the Quran and the traditions, um, you know, it's it's different than what uh, is described, or Mecca is, 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 is it described in uh, the Quran and the Hadith literature. It's supposed to be in a valley, and it's not. It's supposed to have uh, had shrines to idols, uh, before Islam, we have no, we have no, and if they did, why is Muhammad praying to them um, in his early years? Um, Safa Marwa, they were, okay, uh, it's supposed to have a stream going through it. Uh, it's supposed to have fields that would grow crops. Folks, there are no crops in and around Mecca. And we're going to talk about that here in a second. It's supposed to have trees, grass, fruit. Clay and loam, this is tillable soil. Grapes, grain, pomegranates, all of these things are described in the Quran and the Hadith literature. They're not, the, 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 folks, okay, it's, okay. it's a Kaffer, desert. Kaffer, and then Kaffer, the Alp, what? That's because, okay, the Quran is eternal. Don't you understand that five billion years ago, scientists have proven, geologists have proven that five billion years ago, when Mecca was first came down from heaven, it was in a valley. The desert came later. You see the miracle of the Quran. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. By the way, all these arguments are Muslims that I have truly made. I've heard them say this. So they, uh, you're right. You're exactly right. And this this is you know, he's not he's not repeating, you know, he's just not making this up on the fly, folks. These are arguments that have been made previously. It's supposed to have olive trees. There isn't any. And it's supposed to have mountains overlooking the Kaaba. And then you're supposed to have pagans there that are called the Musharakun. Musharakun means that they raise livestock. You cannot raise livestock in Mecca. So the bottom line is Mecca is not in a valley. It does, its nearest mountains are two miles away. Um, it doesn't have any vegetation listed above could not have had any vegetation uh, listed above. Why? Because there's no water. And we're going to talk about that here in just a second. Um, so let's, uh, let's see here. Let's, let me just, let me just say this about the water. I'm not sure where I have the water at, but let me say this about the water. Folks, it, it, it all of these things that it said it has, it has olive trees, it has grapes, it has tillable soil, they raise livestock there. It's all a lie. Mecca gets 4.3 inches of rainfall a year. You cannot, you cannot grow anything with 4.3 inches of annual rainfall. You just cannot do it. Nothing will grow. 
you might get shrubs, you might get tumbleweeds, but you're not going to get trees. You're not definitely not going to get grapes. You're never going to get olive trees. All they have to do, this is all they have to do to prove this calf are wrong is go around to that scratchy, rocky, sandy soil in and around Mecca and dig it up and look for spores from any of these plants that they talk about the, uh, Mecca having. Find me one olive seed in and around Mecca. And you might have an argument. But the fact is, is there's nothing there. Why? Because it doesn't have any water. Now, this is the easy way to argue water. Something happened in my ears here. This is an easy way to argue water. In order, in order for Mecca to have existed, it had to have water. If you don't have water, you don't have plants. You don't have plants, you don't have animals. You don't have animals, you don't have people. You don't have people, you do not have towns or cities. You do not have towns or cities, you do not have civilization, you do not have civilization, you do not have a religion. Water, plants, animals, people, towns, cities, civilization, religion. If you don't have any of these things in between here, it doesn't exist. And how do you get it? How do you, the first thing you start with? No water. There's no water in Mecca. The Zamzam well, you're going to try using the Zamzam well as, as, a, as, as your source of water. The first thing that you're going to have to do is you are going to have to provide some type of archaeological evidence that they used irrigation in, in Mecca. And there isn't any. There is no indication that they ever use any type of uh, irrig irrigation in Mecca. As a matter of fact, who was it? Who just who just posted about? Here we are. Pure dot did about uh, Queen Zub uh, Zubadea. She builds. She's a uh, I think the wife of one of the caliphs or something like that. Is around 800 A.D. Um, she uh, builds a aqueduct that brings water into Mecca. Why? Because the Mecca itself, people were making pilgrimage there, and the Zamzam well was not enough water for them. So she builds this aqueduct going to, um, uh, going into um, Mecca itself. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on here. So notice where um, uh, the Quran is, uh, the Quran positions Mecca in its narrative. Wait, wait. There we go. All right. So here's Mecca, here's Medina, and here's Petra, here's Jerusalem. So let's look at um, the different locations mentioned in the Quran. When you look at locations, geographic locations mentioned in the Quran, there are 65 different locations. 65. Now look where they are, folks. 54 of the 65 locations mentioned in the Quran are 600 miles away. There's these three, there's Ad, Balmud, and Midian. You have nine places named that mostly refer to a people. And again, Ad is mentioned 23 times. Balmud is mentioned 24 times. And Midian is mentioned seven times. Why is Muhammad mentioning these locations, these people groups, and acting as if he's interacting with them in the Quran when they're 600 miles up the road. How can that be? How can that happen? Because it's a lie. Well, if they're mentioned in the Quran, they have to be. They have to be important. But the problem hey, is Eric. that these locations are way, way too far north. Hey, my, Eric? my hearing aids keep going out. I'm going to have to take this. Off. I was showing it off at the beginning of the show. Can you turn it? Get off there. Okay, uh, so when we look at what the hadith, uh, um, uh, the hadith say, these things are um, much more detailed. The later hadith are much more detailed than the original. Then, if they are much more detailed, how can they be accurate repetition recitations of what people cited originally when they keep adding to them? That's, that just that just can't happen. Um, it talks about people being able to sit on top of the mountains to watch the battles that would occur down there. Look, you cannot sit on top of mountains and watch a battle from over a mile away. You just can't do it. It's too far away. When we look at Safa and Marwa, they're supposed to be 
um, high peaks, but they're not. They're 65 and 70 foot tall each. They're just big rocks. Uh, Ishak, he says that Mecca um, had all kinds of trees, and they had to have a clearing project uh, to clear all the trees in and around the Kaaba. Trees don't grow in Mecca unless you bring in water to water them, and they didn't do that at that time. Peter. Um, and Muhammad's war warriors, the people who fought Eric, for Muhammad, Eric not, Rad runs to say something. Land up in Eric. Damascus. Damascus, Damascus is eight hundred miles away. You can't hear. How is that possible? Can you hear us, Eric? Rad wants to say okay. something, sir. Um, let's look at the locations. Location. Well, he can't hear us, Eric. Six hundred twenty or six. Eric. Verses. Okay, he can't hear us. As oh, you have 65 different locations, geographical locations mentioned in the Quran. The Gospel of Luke, you have 110. I think I said 109 earlier. Sorry. It's off by one. Uh, there are nine different places named, 31 different places named in the Gospel of Luke. Um, 54 of those 65 references are 600 miles to the north, whereas in Luke, they're right exactly where they belong. So in the Quran, they're all in the wrong places, and in Luke, they're all in the right places. That's just a side-by-side -side comparison of just, just the gospel of Luke itself. Um, when we look at Zoroastrian influence on Islam, uh, and these are, you know, the Zoroastrian religion is something that they would have, they would have come in contact with. You have stoning for apostasy. Um, you had to have a hadith to put stoning back in the Quran because you have this... Uh, uh, I cannot hear you. Are you guys talking, talking to you? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, let me put this back up here. Okay, now say something. Jess, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. I'm sorry. That's okay. Yeah. So I wanted to just address this water thing real quick, going back to this. Um, okay. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I, and I, I, what happened, folks, is my hearing aids... Hearing aids, I have them. I was Bluetoothing them to this device, and when I tapped it, evidently it disconnected it, and I couldn't hear. So I'm, I apologize. Go ahead. So I guess what I, I just did some research. I've never heard of this Queen to the Die or whatever. Um, this is interesting. I'm just like, wow, I actually learned something here. So I just did a uh, quick uh, uh, AI uh, search on it. Here's what uh, Google AI um, told us Queen Zubadaya. Oh, hold on. Let me, you know what? I'll share it. Hold on. Let me share screen. Okay. Oops. Oops. Are you there? There we go. Yeah. All right, go ahead. Okay. Let's see if I can make it bigger for you guys. Okay. Queen Zubadaya bin Jaffer, wife of Caliph Quran al Rashid, is known for her contribution to the water supply of Mecca including the destruction of an aqueduct and a spring, also known as the Spring of Zuba, Zubadaya, Zubada. This 38-kilometer aqueduct was built between 801 and 809 AD to provide a permanent water supply for Mecca's residents and the pilgrims. The canal runs from Wadi Numan to Al-Azhar neighborhood of Mecca, sometimes through hills and valleys and sometimes underground. Zubadaya commissioned the project and paid for it out of her own money yeah, her own money came from the boot and spoiled the booty and spoils and loot from robbing Christians and other Arabs. Anyway, uh, the canal has been a source of water for Mecca and nearby holy sites for over 1,200 years. And it was restored. It was actually restored in 1928 during the reign of King Abu Aziz. During her yeah, so this whole thing of the well of Zamzam, no, they're not getting the well of Zamzam. They're getting this water from someplace else. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Exactly. Total bomb, yeah. man. And I, yeah, and I, and I addressed this towards the end of this of the slide. Oh, sorry. No, no, it's, it's okay. I mean, because you know, it's when you get information, you throw it out there, and people want to comment on it right away. They don't know the orders I have these slides, and that that's fine. We'll just double tap this. This well had to be built. Had to be built. Oh, not this well. This canal had to be built because the Zamzam well. Let's see here. The Zamzam well could not support the pilgrimage. There just was not enough. There just there just wasn't enough water there. So this 
caliph's wife was seeing the distress that the people were in were saying look we got to do something you know they get out there and they don't have any water could you imagine having a look what happened this year at, at during the hajj people were, were how many people died there's like a thousand people died this yeah. year because Okay. Somebody's calling. It's my daughter. It's it's, it's about fourteen hundred to fifteen hundred, but they we will never know. It's probably closer to ten. Yeah, sure. it, yeah. So it, that's today. I mean, we have air conditioning. You have first aid for people. I mean, think think about that, folks. What it would have been like, you know, you know, thirteen hundred years ago when they're out there trying to make 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 this pilgrimage. They're dropping like flies today. Think about that. They would have been dropping like flies. Would you stop? I shut my phone off. Oh, I shut the bat phone off so it wouldn't bother my hearing aids when it was Bluetoothing. But no, they come back with the bat watch and they're trying to, call, you know. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to send a blank The to bat my watch? Phone. Yeah, to leave me alone. You remember that movie, uh, that show Get Smart? Oh, yeah. That where you talked into a shoe and how, I mean, could you imagine the people talking into the washers today? They're like, what the heck is that? <laughs> we were doing that today. I mean, it's just, it's crazy what we did. Okay. Um, all right. So let's just bounce back to this. Um, when we're looking at the Zoroastrian influences, I really don't want to belabor this, but you know, there's a lot of traditions that we find in Islam itself that come right out of Zoroastrian practices, uh, the way of wearing the veil, um, when you look at the Quran, it only commanded women to, you know, cover their bosoms. But here, the veil is added uh, later because Persian nobles would require their wives to wear it in. And the uh, dental hygiene is absolutely, absolutely crazy. If you look at this Siwak stick, the Siwak stick, there is a video that made it was made a couple of years ago where you have this yeah. guy. He's uh, he's in Florida and he's he's some jihadi supporting guy and he's sitting in this muslim meeting and he is just going to town uh using a siwak on his teeth um and 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 do i mean it's, it's 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 crazy how somebody would do this like if you see somebody sitting in an audience and they have a toothbrush and they're brushing their teeth the whole time that's what this guy's doing with this stick let me show you a picture of this stick here here's the siwak stick so muhammad is supposed to have used these Siwak stick. This is what they look like here. This is what they look like right here. Now notice, notice one thing. It's a stick. And where do the sticks come from? They come from trees. Yeah, trees. So if they come from just tree and there's no trees in Mecca, how can Muhammad have come from Mecca? If this is true, if he used the Siwak stick, did they import them on this magical trade route that they had? Here's some other problems, some big problems for, for Mecca. Again, the, the capital for uh, the Umayyad uh, Caliphate was in Damascus, which is up here in Syria. And then the one for the Abbasids is over here in Baghdad. Here's Mecca. Here's Baghdad. Here's Mecca. Here's, here's Damascus. That is a problem. That is a big, big problem. Eric, can I say something Yeah. about that? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, this is it. <laughs> Thank you. What? Yeah, this is what I have to say about that. <laughs> oh. Okay, got it. <laughs> Uh, let's see. There, that's right. They were brought on the backs of the Barak. I wouldn't even consider that. Um, yeah, you guys, I gotta watch the chat. You guys are having too much fun over there. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so you got uh, none of the rightly guided caliphs are mentioned anywhere outside of the Islamic literature, folks. That is huge. That is a huge problem. The Qureshi tribe is not mentioned anywhere outside of Islamic literature. You know, this ancient tribe that Muhammad came from, it's not mentioned. Nobody had ever heard of it. And the city itself is supposed to have existed for 4,000 years, but nobody has mentioned it in any of the empires surrounding it. Now, look what the Saudis are doing to Mecca today. 
they're building. Here's the big old clock tower. It's just like the fourth highest building in the world. I, yeah, there it is, fourth highest building. It's got the biggest clock face. It's supposed to replace uh, Greenwich Mean Time. It's supposed to be going to Saudi Mean Time or so. I don't even know what the Mean Time is there. Um, when we look at uh, the expansion here, it's destroy. They're destroyed. They have. It's not destroying. They have destroyed the evidence, folks. This is where Muhammad's wife, uh, Khadija, was supposed to. What this is supposed to be her house. This is supposed to be the birthplace of Muhammad's. Right here, you have this expansion and digging up here and here. Now. Let's look, and we're going to get, we're going to talk about that just so, here briefly. But look, was Mecca known? If you look at Mecca itself, it sits right here, not too far from the Red Sea. But look at the other empires around it. Did the Assyrians mention anything in any of these writings from Sargon to Sennacherib? Anybody mention Mecca? No. How about the Babylonians? And you have uh, writings from Nabonidus? Nothing. You have the Roman and all kinds of people writing for the Roman Empire. Did any of these people, Strabo, Pliny, Ptolemy, uh, you also have uh, Amenaeus, uh, Mar Ar I can't even read that, Marcus Aurelius, um, and others? No, nobody mentions Mecca. What about the Persian Empire? No, nothing from the Persian Empire. What about other Mecca empires that were closer, Nabataean Empire? Um, the Sa uh, Sabians, the Hyamar Empire, the Azidi Empire, the Kinda Empire, any of these people, anybody, anybody, mention Mecca. None of these kingdoms, the writings that we have from these kingdoms, mentions Mecca. Nobody. Nobody mentions the Qureshi people. Nobody mentions the towns in and around Mecca. Nothing. When we look at Najran, Again, Najran's mentioned by Strabo, Pliny the Elder, Ptolemy, uh, artists. All of these ancient writers mention Najran. Sana, Taif, uh, Medina, which is Yathrib, Kaibar, they're all mentioned uh, by others in, in the research by Corona is under that. Petra has been mentioned in, uh, extensively in ancient writings. Marib is mentioned in ancient writings. All of these other cities, which are inconsequential compared to Mecca are mentioned, but Mecca is not mentioned, folks. When we look at um, where Mecca is in these along this uh, supposed trail route that went along the western coast of Arabia, I'm not doubting the trade route, but what I am doubting is, is that Mecca was part of it. And the reason why is that Mecca, in order to come off of this trade route, you go up on a plateau, you get off in here in Aden, and you go up on a plateau, and in order to get Mecca on this trade route, you have to come down 3,000 feet off of the plateau to get to Mecca. Here's a map with contour lines. It shows you some relief on there. You have Aden, Sana, then you're up on the plateau, and you're traveling, and you're traveling, and you're traveling all the way up to Petra, up to Gaza. Notice you're up on the plateau. In order to get to Mecca from Taif, you would have to come down off of the plateau. Keep in mind, there's no water here to water your camels. And then come back up on top of the plateau to get to Medina. Why? Why? There's no reason why people would, would do this. So it tells you that Mecca itself was not part of of the trade route. What is the earliest reference to Mecca? The earliest reference to Mecca is um, written during the Caliph of Hisham. This is 741, folks. The first time we find Mecca mentioned in any writing, guys, this is major. The first time we find Mecca mentioned in any writing is over a hundred years after the death of Muhammad. That's, folks, that is devastating. When we look at the, the, the extant writings that we have from this region of the world that date to the 7th century and centuries and centuries earlier than that, and nobody mentions Mecca? Nobody? That's devastating. That is extremely problematic. Also, 
We don't have Mecca on any map. This is supposed to be a part of the trade route. A trade route, uh, what is a trade route? A trade route is something that is on a route that is on a map. And Mecca is not on any map until 900, folks, that is 268 years after the death of Muhammad. Two and a half centuries. And it's not on any map. And this is all documented by Dr. Patricia Corona um, and her uh, Mech and Trade, Hagarism and Mech and Trade, or something. I can't remember the name of the book. Um, here's a second century map of Ara Arabia. There's no Mecca on it. This is Ptolemy's second century uh, reference. Um, another one. Not there. Second century. Uh, here's an, oh my goodness. I don't have this up on the screen. And you guys are letting me get away with this. How are you doing that? Why are you doing that? <laughs> what is wrong with you people? Okay, here's the first. Here's the map right here. No Mecca. Here's another one. No Mecca. Another one. No Mecca. Another one. No Mecca. You guys see a pattern here? There's no Mecca. This is a seventh century map of uh, Arabia. There's no Mecca. If it's supposed to be the center of trade, here, here it is, Mecca trade in the rise of Islam. Um, it, it most certainly uh, couldn't have been. Number one, it didn't have any water. But number two, there was no natural resources there to trade. So, uh, you know, when we look at incense coming in from uh, the Far East, uh, that that was pretty much cut out. Why? Because of uh, the advent or the expansion of Christianity, and the the reduced worshiping of the net, using it in uh, the worshiping of pagan gods. And so she pretty much uh, throws Montgomery Watts's theory out out of uh, blows it out of the water. Um, when you look at his this Montgomery Watts uh, trade theory, um, uh, Mecan trade theory. Originally, the trade came from India, the incense, the silks, the spices, all the way up through here and then across uh, the Sassanid Empire. Uh, this is the Arabian, uh, the Arabian Gulf here. Then that uh, collapsed. And then you have it going around up, across, up at the coast of uh, the western coast of Arabia. That doesn't work. Why? Because, well... I mean, and especially if you're going to include Mecca here, look at you have to come off of the, the, the plateau and then back up another 3,000 feet and then continue. That, that, that doesn't work at all. Um, and the reason why, again, you have to come 3,000 feet off of that plateau. So that doesn't work. The, 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 the most accurate description of trade would have gone up through the Red Sea. And you have all of these different locations on the eastern uh, board or eastern coast of Africa that border the Red Sea where these would have uh, you, you you would have this trade but you most certainly wouldn't be transporting it across some of the most inhospitable uh, locations uninhabitable locations on the planet where you could just keep it on a boat and go up that coast if you look at the ports on the west or eastern coast of Africa we have uh, archaeological evidence and evidence that support the existence of these uh, 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 locations clear back, you know, centuries before the existence of Mecca. I mean, look, it's all up on that coast. And they're all about a day, a day's uh, boat ride in between each other. So you just go from port to port and you, you know, you can port, transport goods all the way up the eastern coast of the African or the eastern coast of Africa, not Arabia. The only port that there's evidence for is Yambu, and that was supposed to be a port city that supported uh, Medina. Uh, Jeddah did not exist at that time. It was not. It was not in existence at this time. So it just completely destroys this trade route um, theory. So why is there no histories of Mecca? I mean, look at look, look right here. This these are ancient. These are old pictures of Mecca. Look how bleak that is. I mean, there's there's nothing growing there. There's no vegetation. There's nothing there. You look at soil studies. Tell us that the soil has never been able to support any type of vegetable growth at all. 
Why? You're, you're, why is that important? Well, I'm fixing to show you why that's important. Look at it. There's no, there's no, there's nothing. There's no tree. There's nothing growing there, folks. There's no vegetation at all. There's nothing. So when you look about those four locations, it's a desert. Again, here's the water issue. Where there's no desert, there's no water. Where there's no water, there's no food. There's no food, there's no people, there's no people, there's no cities, no cities, no civilization, no civilization, there's no religion, there's no Islam. So because Mecca only gets 4.3 inches of water a year, it cannot support the growth of food, period. Period. You can't grow anything there. So therefore, it's not going to be the center of trade, and it's not going to be the center of area, and nobody's going to live there. The pe and uh, that video that I did, folks, the video that we did a couple weeks ago, where it says Ptolemy finds Mecca sorta. I outlined several different explore ancient explorers and cartographers that went through that area, and they all say that it was uninhabitable. Uninhabitable means that you can't live there. Why can't you live there? Because there's no water. You don't have any water. You can't grow food. You can't grow food. You can't have livestock. You can't have livestock. You can't have people. You can't, you can't have a civilization. You can't have a religion originate in some place where you can't have people. Period. Okay. Uh, let's see here. It's built upon a myth. Okay. Zamzam well. Zamzam well was water is plentiful and ancient. No, it's not. Zamzam well. Um, the Zamzel well is, is basically refuted that Mecca had, uh, it's supposed to say that it had no water. Um, it's supposed to have existed by the time of, I, from Abraham, uh, people, other people say it's from the time of Adam and Eve. I don't, I don't believe this far as I can throw it anyway. Um, but when we look at the current narrative, it said that Hagar, not Sarah, and they call Hagar the, the wife of Abraham, by the way. She was not the wife of Abraham. Nobody says that except for the Quran. Um, but anyway, uh, let's see here. Uh, she goes out looking for the water and finds it. And Zamzam is supposed to mean stop, stop. Is supposed to um, is what it's supposed to mean. It's supposed to be this inexhaustible uh, source of water. It's supposed to be the clearest and purest. And I want to ask you a question about this. I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, but. Do you think that if Muslims make that claim, you don't think that that is a miraculous thing that the well keeps producing water? Like, is that not an impressive feat, or do you think it's pumped from somewhere else? What is your hypothesis on that? Uh, I think that this story of Hagar finding the Zamzam well has been redacted back on Islamic history. And I'm going to show you why here in just a second. If you just hang with me just here, just a second. I'm going to, because the, 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 remember the story. Abraham turned Hagar out and Ishmael out. Why? Because Ishmael was mocking uh, Isaac. And uh, 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 so uh, his wife gets mad. Sarah gets mad. She says, you have to get rid of her. So he throws Hagar out and makes her, she, he banishes her to the desert where she wanders and gets thirsty and starts, sits down and starts crying because her, her, her son's going to die. And so she starts running back and forth between Safa and Marwa, these two hills, looking for water in desperation. But watch this. Watch this. this, this you're going to go, what? This doesn't work. You're going to say exactly why it doesn't work. Um, let's see here. When we look at the Zamzam well itself, we don't know a lot about it. Here's the oldest picture of the well. Like I said, it's, it's a big hole in the ground where people would walk down and draw the water out. These are steps that used to go down to it. Um, and then it got to the point where today, or in 1953, they were only drawing it out by hand. And then they built this uh, building over it. And then uh, they put the... the, the area around the Kaaba where the Zamzam well is today, they built a platform over it. So you can't even get to it uh, today. And if you look at it today, here's the Kaaba and here's where the circle marks the spot. And they have a museum there. Now, here's the problem. Here's the nagging problem, Isa. This, this, is, this is why this is a problem. The story is, is that Abraham 
banished Hagar and Ishmael into the desert. And uh, in doing so, they had to go looking for water. Now, if you remember also that same source, the Quran says that uh, the Kaaba was rebuilt by Ishmael and Abraham. This is important. Look at this. Here is the Kaaba. Here is the Zamzam well. It's 21 meters away. It's 60 feet away from the Kaaba. If Ishmael and Abraham are building, rebuilding the Kaaba and living here in and around the Kaaba, how in the heck is Hagar running in between these two hills looking for water and finds a Zamzam well that is 60 feet away from the same Kaaba? Geographically, spatially, this does not comport to the standard Islamic narrative. It's completely disjointed. It's only 60 feet away from the Kaaba. And I'm going to show you something else here. Okay, if Abraham lived next to the Kaaba, then why is Hagar only 21 meters away? This makes zero sense. Makes zero sense. Now, this is the Kaaba, and then you have the Zamzam well right here. Now, remember, Hagar is running in between the two mountains of Safa and Marwa. Safa and Marwa are enclosed today in this big building right here. This is Safa and this is Marwa. The Zamzam well is over here. If she's running in between these two hills, why is the well over here? Why isn't the well over here where she's supposed to be finding it? That doesn't make any sense at all. And look at here. They're only they're only 450 feet apart. And the tradition is, is that she ran seven times, which is about two miles. That's a good little jog, but it's not devastating. But it's all enclosed today. Safa is only 65 feet tall. Marwa is only 75 feet. These aren't mountains. These are just big rocks is all they are. They're just rocks. So she's running in between these big rocks, not mountains, and she's doing it in her own backyard. The neighbors would have had her institutionalized if this story is true. They'd say, Abraham, that crazy woman of yours is out there running around again. Can you go place her up, please? She's acting nuts. So when we look at where these things are located, here's Safa, here's Marwa, or one of the two. I can't remember which one is which. But it's it's this is the building that, that they're in. They run in between. Uh, this, this, they do it inside now. So they don't have to subject themselves to 130 degrees uh, temperature. It's 130 degrees temperature. Now here's that Jebediah well. Can they still even die? What's that? Can they still even die? <laughs> still dying, yeah. You're, you're, at, you're right, yeah. You're absolutely right. Uh, that well, oh, here it is. Okay, so that canal that we were talking about earlier, that was completed in 801. Um, I actually have pictures of it. Yeah, I, th I think I got a couple pictures of it. Um, it remained the main source for 1,200 years. And as the Hajj has increased, the demand for water has increased. They have all kind. They have a desalinization plant now, folks, that uh, they have huge water tanks that support uh, Mecca today. But the problem is, is that there's no evidence for irrigation in Mecca. And that's where they run into the problem. You have to have water to grow these crops. And they didn't have any. This is the, this is the uh, canal uh, today, what is left of it today. Uh, did you think that was possible? Yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. Those hills, they're full of music. That's why she's running in between them. woman is nuts. Uh, again, here's uh, what's left of that. But it's like an engineering marvel, you know, considering the fact that they built this in a place that has that, that, uh, that kind of heat. Okay, let's uh, look at some of the responses to uh, Mecca, or the non-existence of, of Mecca. Number one, uh, the absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. Um, Ptolemy, 
uh, found uh, Mecca by listing it as Makaraba. Uh, you have Diodorus uh, mentioning a temple that all Arabs went to. And then, of course, Psalm 84 and the Valley of Becca. Folks, all four of these are pathetic. Let's start with this one. Absence of evidence is not absence or evidence of absence. Now, this is a true statement, but the fact is, is this is not a politi a, 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 applicable, 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 however you want to say it. It's, it's a true statement um, when you don't have any evidence, but that doesn't mean that the evidence it has not been discovered yet. And I agree with that. But it would have to be, it would have to be that they were looking for it. The problem is, is that they haven't. They have, they're not looking for it. That's when you look at the um, the the YouTube advertisement for today's show has a bunch of people with sticking their heads in the sand. That's because they're not bothering to look for the evidence supporting Mecca. As a matter of fact, they they destroyed it. Is what they've done. All the Mecca has been graded and cemented over, and uh, when you look at the other nearby towns that have some type of history to them, they all have all kinds of evidence that support them. And the other thing is, is that you can't get better conditions to support evidence, ancient uh, artifacts. And this is kind of like saying, well, the dog ate my homework. This is, this, this is Mecca. Look at here, folks. Here's the Kaaba, Mecca, Zamzamwell, Safa, Marwa, Big Ben Clock Tower, all of these buildings being built. Look what they're doing to the evidence that they could excavate using archeological practices and layers. Right here, this is ground level, folks, right here. This is ground level. Look what they're doing. They're digging down into the ground, digging down into the ground. You dig down to the ground, you're gonna find archeological evidence. If, in fact, this city has a 4,000 year history. You know what they found? Nothing. There is nothing there. If there's nothing there, that means that this city did not have any evidence, archaeological evidence, supporting its history. Now, the question is, is that, well, can they go looking for it? No. Now it's all been cemented over. And any evidence that would have existed has been hauled off and discarded. There's nothing there. Saudi Arabia has gone in and intentionally destroyed any type of evidence that could have, would have, or should have existed. And if it didn't exist, what better way to cover it up than to cement right over the top of it? And this is exactly what they've done. Ptolemy and Makaraba. This was one of the main uh, issues in that other video that we did a couple weeks ago. Um, again, I did. Okay. Um, number one, Ptolemy never visited Arabia. He never st set foot on the uh, Arabian Peninsula. Um, when we look at where he maps it, Mecca is south and east, or south and west of uh, Medina, where Makaraba is, no, Mecca is south and west of Medina. Oh, oh no, here we go. Okay, according to Makaraba, Ptolemy would be placing Mecca south and east of uh, Medina, when the fact is Mecca is south and west of Medina. Mecca and Makaraba have no ethnological similarities in their origins. And this is where Dr. Patricia Corona again comes out. She said, the plain truth is that the name of Makaraba has nothing to do with Mecca. And the location is indicated by Ptolemy for Makaraba is in no way dictates the identification of the two. When I was on Lloyd's show a couple of weeks ago, he brought up, uh, brought up all the evidence showing that this Makaraba is actually down in Yemen, way south. Um, and then no one else mentions Makaraba ever in ancient writings. This is the only time it's ever mentioned. And whoever mapped out that region wrote it down as uninhabitable. So you, you know, you, this, this is just an impossibility to try to say that Makaraba is, um, is Mecca. Then you go to Diodorus uh, in his writings mentioning the te temple. He says this is a place where all Arabs um, worshipped. Um, includes Arabs of the Transjordan and the Sinai, but he's referring to this people group here, the Banzamenes, and this is 500 miles from Mecca. These people are um, north of the Red Sea, next to what is now Nabataean or Petra, 
and this is corroborated by uh, Dan Gibson. They're clear up here, folks. This is where they are. This is where the Diodorus' temple is. And if you talk about Nabataeans and Petra being the original capital, this fits perfectly with that. So if you want to say that, yeah, this was a temple that all the Arabs went to worship at, okay, fine. It's not Mecca. And this isn't the Kaaba. Okay, lastly, Psalm 84 in the Valley of Becca. It says uh, in Psalm 84 that uh, Becca is supposed to be Mecca, and we find it right there in the Bible in Psalm 84. Um, it's, uh, think about this. This is where, you know, David, King David, 700 miles away from Mecca, and we're supposed to believe, we're supposed to believe this. We have historical evidence for King David in Jerusalem in the 10th century B.C., and you're going to try to tell us that David was actually talking about someplace that they would go on a pilgrimage, clear down into uh, Arabia. That's 1,400 miles. Listen to what the verse says. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. It's talking about the temple of God, where God's Shekinah glory would, uh, would exist. This is God's temple. This is where they had the, the tents and the tabernacle uh, built. This is not Mecca. This is God. This is the Jewish tent, um, a, pal a place near your altar. Where is the altar? It's in Jerusalem. It's not down in in Mecca. It's um, when you start talking about the, uh, you know, where they kept the Ark of the Covenant and all those things. No, this this is not it. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. Is the Kaaba supposed to be the house of the Lord? No. The Kaaba is the house of a meteorite, and that's it. Whose hearts are set on a pilgrimage. Ooh, a pilgrimage. People would make a pilgrimage to Jerusalem? Yes. Yes, they would. People make all kinds of pilgrimages to Jerusalem for all kinds of different holidays. So, yes, they would make a pilgrimage. Would they make a pilgrimage to Mecca, though? Again, that would be a 1,500-mile pilgrimage. No, there is no record written by any Jew making a pilgrimage to Mecca. Somebody would have written it down. Somebody would have referred to it, but nobody ever did. Gee whiz, that's really weird. And it's supposed to be a place of springs where the autumn rains cover it, cover it with pools. Again, 4.3 inches of annual rainfall, folks. No, that's impossible. And then they go from strength to strength till each appears before God in Zion. Folks, when Zion is mentioned, it talks about Jerusalem. Yeah. Not, Mecca. Not Mecca. Yeah, exactly. There's nothing there. So conclusions. Mecca is, uh, is foundational for both Muhammad and the Quran. Both of them fail if it doesn't exist. It's important for Muslims because they think that this is the earliest and most important city of mankind. Um, it's references to Mecca and the Quran don't hold up historically, meaning that um, they, they, they do not indicate locations or um, geographical descriptions as we find and mandated by Hadith. Um, it doesn't mention, it doesn't have any fruit trees, it doesn't have any soil to till. It's in a desert folks um and it's supposed to be the greatest city in history but nobody mentions it prior to is islam the advent of islam um geographically speaking it has 65 references in the quran and 54 of those are 600 to a thousand miles too far north folks let me uh let me just close by by saying this and i just i just slipped my mind let me go back through this Authors did. There are things that were written during the Sassanid uh, Empire, Roman Empire, Byzantine Empire, called Gazetteers. Gazetteers. Gazetteers is how you pronounce it. And these were descriptions provided to providential uh, governors on the details of certain regions, certain cities, certain towns. 
and they needed these so they could interact with these people groups peaceably, rule over them peaceably, know their their language, their customs, uh, their their um, uh, the way that they did business, um, how they interacted with one another. But more importantly, also for drafting men into service, into their armies. You would, know, you would want to know how many people lived in that location, the names of the families uh, that lived there, so you could draft their sons into your military. None of these massive amounts of gazetteers that are, that are extant today mention Mecca, the Qureshi tribe, or provide any reference to a religion from that region. None of them do. None of them. None of them prior to the seventh century. So when we start talking about the absence of evidence, the absence of evidence is deafening. If you don't have any evidence for Mecca, you do not have Islam. You do not have Muhammad. You do not have a Quran because all of them require the location from which Muhammad originated, from which the Quran was given to Muhammad, supposedly, and all of these events occurred. So if, Me if Mecca is not, if, if Mecca did not exist in the seventh century, Islam is based on a lie. All right, I think I'm gonna leave it right there. Does anybody have anything that they want to add no. to this? Of course. Go ahead, Mr. So, let me get this straight. They went into Mecca, the most holy site in Islam, and they. That's pretty yes, much what they, they did. did, right? Yes, they did. Mm. Yes, they did. She was nine years old. Yes, she was nine years old. <laughs> no, so here's the thing on this. I mean, I, I, I love the argument that there's no Mecca, there's no Islam. And by the way, so here's the thing. Let me just share this with you. Um, is that, share Eko, were you going to share something too? Is that why I'm, what I'm looking at here? Yeah, it's just uh, one I wanted to share earlier while you're talking about uh, how. Uh, fertile Mecca is, but it was just for comics. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll get to it. Just give me a minute. Go ahead, Brad. What are we saying All here? Right. What, are, what are we looking at? What do I do with here? Wait, hold on. Where are you here? This is Google Earth. Yeah, that's the um, actual, that's a picture of the aqueduct. Well, that's like the retention pond. This is the Enzubiba of Waterway. If right. You search for directions. Mecca, uh, Saudi Arabia. Like I said, it's actually 38.1 kilometers, which is what AI said. So this yep. would probably pretty much be the route. I mean, because it would go along a road route. You know what I mean? Yep. Um, so yeah, that's um, this is this is the aqueduct. Um, yeah, and when was this built again? You remember uh, what year? 800, 800, sometime around 800. 801, 801. It's completed in 801. Yeah. So that is. Again, so if you're going to say Mecca is supposed to be this place where Muhammad lived, this is 570 to 632, this is 801, you're, you're, you're well over a century and a half removed from the events of, and descriptions of Mecca during the time and prior to Muhammad. You have to have olive trees, you have to have livestock, you have to have uh, grass, you have to have tillable soil. None of that existed. And the reason why it exists is because they didn't have any water. This water supply, again, like you said, um, comes after the fact, supply water to a city that people are now making pilgrimage to, are now making a pilgrimage to, I got something in my hand, sorry, that are now making a pilgrimage to centuries later. And, uh, you can't you can't have that many thousands of people going to that one location unless they got water. There's even a story. There's even a story in the Quran where you have elephants attacking the Kaaba. Now think about that, folks. How much water does an elephant require a day? 
a lot. You're talking like 30 gallons, to 30 to 50 gallons of water a day just to sustain one elephant. And you have an army of elephants attacking the continent. This, again, this is nothing but science fiction. This, this is just nothing but lies. And the, the shocking part is, is nobody analyzes these things. They just say, oh, okay. It's disgusting. Okay, uh, Nico, what were you going to add, sir? Let me bring your. Can I bring up your screen? You want me to add this to the stage here? Yes, this one's safe. Um, and I did check it. I ran it through uh, you, YouTube to make sure that there's no copyright infringement, so there's no impact. So we're all set there. So it's basically a little skit from a 1986 movie, uh, Three Amigos, um, who, that would represent what the trek to Mecca might look like back in the day of Muhammad, and if uh let's play a little game with the audience here let's see if uh anyone can spot the character that might represent him <laughs> wait for it <laughs> about a minute long so okay That would be like, that would be in my estimation of what it would be, might be like uh, for Muhammad and maybe his companions traveling with him, if yeah. it actually existed. That's that's funny. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I mean, think about making that the Hajj um, during that time period, or I mean, I mean, during any of the centuries. Uh, but we would we talking what seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth, thirteenth, fourteenth, fifteenth, sixteenth. 17th, 18th centuries, not having the modern conveniences that we do for, for transportation today. I mean, it would just be absolutely horrendous uh, to, to try to do that. Um, I, I couldn't, I just, and then not only having the system, and Paul, we've done, is Paul still here? No, he's gone. Um, we've done, we've talked about the Sharia, how the Sharia requires you to do certain things during the Hajj and um, how you have to, uh, how, how expensive it would be just for like the animal sacrifice that you have to provide, uh, the food that you have to, that you would have to, con you know, that people would consume, of course. You know, the bottom line is, is that it would have been absolutely miraculous to be able to make a Hajj and then live to tell about it. It, 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 it just, impossible especially in that part in that part of the world uh there was a the most the wealthiest man alive or whoever lived prior to bill gates and who's the amazon guy the, uh what's his name what's the amazon guy's name that's rich bezo bezo yeah bezo. even Elon Musk. prior to him was a guy by the name of manasseh musa and he was a slave trader uh, out of Mali, the kingdom of Mali. And they built all kinds of different madrasas and mosques and stuff throughout the He makes this huge pilgrimage with hundreds of camels laden with tons of bars of gold and slaves that he presented as gifts along his way. But I could about imagine trying to take that you know, entourage of his into Mecca. You know, you would have to, I would think that you would have to go up north into uh, north of the Red Sea, north of the Gulf of Aqaba, and then come down 
you know, he might have tra- come you know, across the Red Sea. Who knows? But I mean, just just making that would have been just absolutely horrendous. And to think of the you know the, the amount of water, fresh water that you would need in order to make that trek with that many camels, that many people, um, crazy. There was a um, so have you guys ever heard the story about? Um, well, not the story, but how um, the how um, Uthman, the inventor of the Quran, um, was murdered. You guys have heard the story, right? Okay. Yeah, where he's murdered by his own people. Right, uh, Muslims. Well, here's the thing. So, this is this is why Aisha and um, what's his name um, later fought a civil war. Um, Who? Uh, Ali, uh, Aisha and Ali. She was nine years old. Okay, just read that. Yeah. That one, yeah. <laughs> well, it was the time for Hajj. Now, remember, these are the original Muslims. They came from Mecca. They've been to Hajj millions of times. And the Quran only says you got you only got to make Hajj once in a lifetime, right? If you can. So it's not that big of a deal. But they've been on the Hajj multiple millions and millions of times, right? Okay, it's not a problem. Like every year they go. Well, all of a sudden, in this Caliph's time of need. When he's surrounded, his house is surrounded by these people who want to kill him, okay, because he invented the crown. Um, <laughs> they decide, oh, we're all going to go for Hodge Hajj now. And they totally abandoned him. <laughs> Oops. No, Anybody? seriously, like the, the, the whole town was just like, yeah, okay, we're going to be someplace else. And as soon as they left, the angry Muslim mob went in and hacked him to death. Yeah. Yep. Three of the first four rightly guided caliphs, supposedly, were killed by their own people. I mean, uh, no one to survive. I mean, die of not natural death. He got sick, he took a bath when it was too cold. It was Abu Bakr. But Omar was killed by his own people. Uthman was killed. Ali was killed by his own people. So, you know, not much of a religion. Oh, of- it's, worse for, it's worse for Ali. So, okay. Um, so remember, okay, so this is put in the context, um, the Christians of Najaf, um, Muhammad did the whole prayer curse thing, right? Where he said, okay, let's have the, the prayer warrior where, uh, um, I will, I, I will pray that Allah curses me. If I'm a liar, and you pray that your Jesus curses you. If you're a liar or something like that, right? Well, the Christians didn't do it because that's just stupid. Um, but anyway, he did it supposedly. Okay. <clears throat> Within a year. Okay, he, he would die. His daughter would die, and his unborn grandbaby would die. Not only that, but his two surviving grand grandkids would die, like five to ten years later. And um, Ali would die a few years later. So his whole family was wiped out. Yeah. Now here, here's kind of the funny thing. So how how um, Fatima? Uh, Muhammad's daughter, how she died in his own born grandbaby died. When they declared um, um, Abu Bakr as Caliph, Ali wanted to be Caliph. Right. Right? right. And so Uthman got an armed mob of Muslim men, surrounded the house, Ali's house, and demanded that Ali sw- swear his uh, bidda, his allegiance to, Uth- to uh, Abu Bakr. And when he wouldn't come out, he started pounding on the door and he broke the door down. And Fatima was in the front of the door trying to hold it back, and she was like four, six months pregnant, right? Okay, trying to hold the door back, trying to keep um, um, Abu Bakr, or not Abu Bakr, Uthman from busting down the door. Well, he busted down the door, breaking, knocking um, Fatima over, breaking one of her ribs. That's why the Shia, they all swear by, I swear by Fatima's rib. <laughs> you might hear them say that every once in a while. Yeah, <laughs> okay, that's what they're talking about. They're swearing by Fatima's rib. Anyway, broke her rib, causing her miscarriage, and she died a few months later. Well, I didn't know that. I didn't know she died from that. Yeah. yeah. So the uh, man killed Muhammad's own grandbaby. Oh, and they chopped up um, Hassan's head, uh, Hussein's head. Um, I forgot how the other one died. Look that up. But yeah, pretty much they all died. I mean, they all murdered by Muslims. I mean, it's just, it's just sick. I mean, if you look at the way that they treat each other today, this is a good indication of the way that they treat them. Nothing's changed. Nothing, and they want to bring this to the Western, the Western world. And I they are bringing it to the Western world. I know, and I'd say keep it, which 
leads us to a segue to close the show for today. Uh, next week, we're going to have the Patriotic Christian on, on our show. Nico sent posted a link in private chat. Do you want me to show this video, Nico? Is that okay? Um, I probably I will probably watch it first, Terry, before you show this in public. I, I pushed the envelope on my own channel, so you might want to watch it first. Why? What's wrong with it? Does it have um, especially in context, this one it's actually a clip from one of the streams that I did with Patriotic Christian, where he's uh, in his, in, I, I thought of it while uh, Paul was talking about AI and how that that uh, how that's being done. So anyway, uh, Patriotic Christian is is questioning AI about. The definition of Muhammad and Islam and all these things, and the response is uh, it's hilarious. But you, I'd re you should watch it first. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Well, I appreciate the warning. Yeah. Uh, yes. Thank you, Connie. Um, and I, you know, I was yeah. I, every time when I think of Connie, this is you know. Lady, go sit yeah. your behind down in the corner somewhere until we call your name. Right. Yeah. That's what. I, that's what I think. <laughs> is, that, is that what happened? Is that what happened when you engaged with? Uh... Mr. Bomer, that he he just shut and put you in a corner. That's what he said, verbatim. That's straight from the horse's ass. Yeah. Well, yeah, he was nice he person. was he was showing a video where I was talking, and then you know he made his comment in his video. Yeah, that was their five-hour hate um, fest, where they were coming after you there. Yeah, well, they were coming. Now, keep I in mind, what can you do? When, when they accused they they accused me of fitna. And what hap, what what can Muslims do to people who cause fitna in the land, corruption in the land? Kill them. Yeah, they can, they can murder. They can kill you. Yeah, so he accuses me of fitna, putting a fatwa on me. Good times, good times. Doesn't work. Now, I, you know, I feel like that Salman Rushdie. You know, he had to wait like thirty years before they finally. It's not funny. I shouldn't laugh at that. But I mean, it took him 30, 40 years in order to finally get a hold of him. And, you know, he comes out and he's all, he's all jacked up. But, any, but yeah, anyway. Um, so, uh, like I said, next week, we're going to uh, have the Patriotic Christian on. And we're going to discuss uh, what's going on in, in England and uh, some people call the UK, United Kingdom today. I, I still call it England. Um, and uh, some of the things that he has gone through and what they're doing to just, you know, your everyday, you know, everyday citizens. It's absolutely atrocious. So um, I would suggest that you tune in, uh, do a little research, and uh, you can come up with some good questions for uh, for this, this gentleman for next week. Does anybody have anything else to add to the show before we close it out? I would choose the cow. I would choose the cow. I would choose the cow. Yes, choose the cow. The cow most definitely. Where is that? That's right. There. I would choose the cow. Thank oh, you. Sorry. Make sure oh, you I'm choose sorry. the cow. Swine Go ahead. Of the humankind. <laughs> Swine <laughs> of the humankind. Issa, what was your question or comment? Issa? Do Issa, do you have something to say before we go? Uh, Issa's hearing aids must be disconnected too. I have a spoiler alert, if I may, about next week. Uh, just a Go little ahead. quick uh, overview of what happened to the guy in the span of less than two weeks. Um, he, he came on, um, and really to catch up, we had a little falling out, so kind of he got he came on, and yeah, there you go. That's it, basically in the span of two weeks. Me? There we go. Oh, uh, yeah, so sorry, basically, in the span, some... oh. go, go ahead, Issa. Oh, yeah, just a quick thing. I was wondering if we could look at God Logic's debate with John Fontaine. Like, we could explore that. I'd just be interested to see what, you know, y'all think about it. And I know I thought it was an interesting debate. So, what was the guy's name? John Fontaine? Yeah. John, he's and part at what, what? what timestamp? 
do you have a time stamp or you want the whole thing? I mean, how long are these debates? These debates could probably be. A couple hours. No, I was just saying maybe a week. I, I could get a time stamp for you. I was just thinking about covering the segment, like the opening arguments and maybe like a, a little bit of the crossfire. I was thinking that not, it wouldn't have to be the whole thing because I know the show is, you don't want to go for hours, but I think it would be a really, because a lot of it's really interesting. His, yeah, his let's do that. Because he, I really feel that, you know, John Fontaine really did into a very good job, but I think it would be interesting to see like, you know, a deeper analysis of it, you know. Well, we're going to have, well, we're going to have the patriotic Christian on for about an hour next week. Cause I, it's, you know, it's six hour ahead of us. And so, you know, that's midnight uh, for him uh, when we get done after that hour. And then we could do that uh, the second hour. How's that? Sounds great. All right. We'll do that. Uh, we're going to go ahead and leave it there. Um, everybody that came tonight, thank you so much for coming. People in chat, again, I love reading your comments um, and how you participate there. You guys got a super sense of humor. Um, some of you are over the top, too, which I, is, is A-OK. -okay. Uh, everybody <laughs> on the panel today, again, thank you for uh, contributing. And uh, I'll see you next week on the Cross and the Crescent discussion group. Let me go to the cold close. Advanced student and specialist, that the standard narrative has holes. That's what I'm <laughs> That the Muslims were riding against one another. And as much as we don't want to face the fact, the Muslims were lying sometimes. They were fabricating, they were embellishing, and that might be hard to accept, but that is a reality.